What's going on everyone? Ray Delvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com and today I want to go through 12 great resources that you're going to love if you're a web designer and I broke this down into four categories and that's website setup, graphics, code, and marketing. So there's a little taste of everything if you're managing a website and these are the ones that I'm just going back to most frequently. You know, I tend to use them over and over again. So I probably could have picked it about 10 more, but I wanted to keep this video about 15 minutes long. So I'll just briefly explain each one of these in about a minute or so. And the first one here, this is my go-to web hosting company for local client websites. And that's HostGator. If you go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash HostGator, you'll get a 45% off deal for one year of hosting. And if you use my coupon code WPC1, that's going to support my channel so I can continue to make free videos like this for all of you. And HostGator has been around for going on 17 years now. I've used them for about the last decade. And in my experience, they're one of the best big web hosting companies out there. I've had very few problems hosting dozens and dozens of websites over the years on their servers. And so I think they're the best to get started if you want reliable, affordable hosting. And as always, I'm all about creating WordPress websites. If you're a beginner, I've got free training to get you set up with HostGator and WordPress. I'll link that up here and in the description below if you'd like to get sent that free training video series. And if you're a little bit more advanced, then you're probably at the point where you're choosing a WordPress theme. And the one that I like for beginners is Divi because they give you the ability to, to build a layout with drag and drop as opposed to needing to know code or having to install plugins to do a lot of the kind of stuff that you might need to do otherwise. This is another example where I have a full tutorial building a website with Divi. Let me actually jump over to the next tab here and show you that. So I went ahead and created a fake landscaping website as though this was for a real local company. And I built this layout using Divi. So if you'd like to see that full tutorial, that will be sent in the WordPress training that I mentioned previously. And I'll link up the video if you'd like to go through it right now. It is kind of long. It's about two hours long. So you'll need to set aside some time to go through it. But that will give you a great introduction on how to use Divi. And like HostGator, you can support these free tutorials. If you decide to use Divi as your WordPress theme, go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash Divi, and that'll link you up. And it is great for web designers because, you know, you're going to be building multiple websites. So in my experience, you want to kind of use the same template. And the good thing about Divi is you can create a library of templates or layouts that you'd like to use from one client to the other. So you don't have to start from scratch. So if you're serious about making money from local clients, I'd recommend that you check that out, which I'll link in the description below as well. Tool number three here is Google Analytics. And you know this is something that you're going to need to install if you want to measure the traffic on the website after it's launched. Usually it's one of the last steps that I'll do before launching a website is um, installing Google Analytics. And this is my favorite report here, which if on the left-hand navigation menu, if you, if you go to Acquisition, All Traffic, Source Medium, this is going to show you where you're getting your traffic from, and it breaks it down. So you'll see if you have social traffic, if you're getting traffic from Google. Free traffic from Google is listed as organic, and paid traffic has this CPC designa designation, which stands for cost per click. And there's a lot of cool data that you can dig into within Google Analytics once your website starts getting traffic. The next tool is going to be used in tandem with Google Analytics because Analytics shows you a report of people that have landed on your website. The next tool is Google Search Console and this is going to show you how your website is appearing within Google Search. So it's kind of like one step above that. You can see on here it shows you how many clicks you got and that is really the traffic you're getting from Google Organic. But it also shows you how many impressions that your website got on Google Search. Along with that, they tell you the average click-through rate and your average position on Google Search. SEO really is an ongoing process where you're constantly monitoring how you're getting your traffic, where you're getting your traffic. And then when it comes down to Google Search, you want to see the keywords that you begin to rank for and then optimize pages and posts around those keywords 
expand content on those keywords, give more information, and be more transparent with all that, and Google's going to reward you with more traffic. And that's really the short, <laughs> the really short story on SEO. We're now getting to the graphics section, and I have two links here. The first is my favorite free stock photography website, and that's pexels.com. In my experience designing websites for clients, getting content, especially images, is one of the hardest jobs, especially if they're a non-technical person. They might have images stored on a computer or on their phone, but it's not that simple or it's not simple for them to get it to you. And then if you need them to take new photos, that's even more difficult. I always like to load the website with these free stock photos, build the template out, and just have an idea of how we're going to fill it with unique photos. But most of the time, you can get away with using these free stock photos. So I'll just do a search here. There's a few suggestions. But I'll just search for business. So we'll see what comes up with this. And you know, you can scroll through and see the different types of photos you have to select from. So I love this website. And in terms of graphics, the one that I use the most is Icon Finder. And it looks like this is iconfinder.com. And what I do is I normally just do a search here. In this example, I just did a search for social. And you can find icons for a wide variety of uses. But in this instance, I'm looking at social media icons. And what I always do is go into this license type and make sure that the icons that I select are for commercial use with no link back. The next three links here are going to be code oriented and if you are coming into web design from a development background then you're probably a little bit more familiar with code um, web code pretty much all the web code that I've learned I've done through real life projects I didn't take any courses with HTML or CSS I took a programming language course in college that taught us C++ which is a little bit of more of a higher level programming language but that gave me the confidence to learn this on my own. Because of that, I know how to do a lot of things, but I don't have all of these things in my working memory. So <laughs> I have to Google a lot of times for HTML or CSS fixes or just to identify a CSS property that I want to implement. And most of the times when I do the searches, I end up on this website. So from w3schools.com, you can learn a lot of these web, almost every web language it looks like. And like I said, the thing that I use it the most for is the CSS properties. So let's say I want to apply a CSS display property. I want to go into here and see what my options are. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, they'll show you. Let me click into the display property, and they're going to show you the values that you can use. So inline, block, inline block. This is one that I've been using recently. And this is, you know, this is the, the nuts and bolts of how you're going to design a website. And usually what happens is you'll try and do something with CSS. It won't work. And whenever you have issues like that, the best forum that I've come across is this site, stackoverflow.com. I can't tell you how many fixes I've found on here over the years with especially CSS, HTML, and jQuery or JavaScript code. It's so good for that. If you know what to search for, and if you know the the problem that you're having, you can describe it within Google. This site will come up a lot. <laughs> and the last one that I have here in the code section, this is the WordPress code reference. So if you're going onto the server side and you are digging into and customizing the WordPress templates, which are PHP code, you're going to find functions in there that you might not know what they do and this is where you're going to find out what they do so WordPress has a lot of built-in functions that you can use if you'd like to customize your website and this is obviously only for the experienced web designer one that has a technical background and is interested in in digging this deep but you know I've used this site many many times just to figure out how things are working on the back end of my theme and the last handful of links here are from marketing. So the first one that I have on here is MailChimp.com. And this is email marketing software. I use them personally. So if you sign up to my free WordPress training that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, 
you're going to be signing up to my MailChimp email list. <laughs> so I use, and I also have um, an email list for my web design clients. So I'll send them information out every month or so. You know, they're not really interested in getting bombarded, but I found that that helps my connection with my clients if I can educate them on a little thing here or there. And obviously, if you're doing work and managing somebody's website, you're probably going to want to upsell them on marketing techniques so you can use MailChimp and manage their email list if you want to make a little extra money freelancing and doing that. And the nice thing about them is they are free up to 2,000 subscribers. Next up is a blog, and this is searchengineland.com. So if you're interested in learning about how SEO works, how to get more traffic to your website, and stay on top of these industry trends, this is the best web website that I've found to do it. Just so I can stay in touch with what Google is doing, what they're thinking, what they're changing. You know, a lot, a lot of what I do is managing local business websites. So a big part of what I'm doing is the Google Maps section. And that has changed so much in the last five years. That's probably been the biggest change on the Google search page. And the last link here is also an, uh, another blog, but it's more geared towards online advertising. And that's wordstream.com. So if, if you want to move up a level and, you know, not just hope that you're going to get traffic from Google, but you actually want to pull out your credit card, buy advertising, and get traffic to your website immediately, this is a great blog to get strategies and to figure out how to get the most bang for your buck when you're getting into online advertising. And as I've alluded to a few times throughout this video, most of the work I've done as a web designer has been freelancing for local small business clients. That's the focus of my blog, which is WebsiteProfitCourse.com. If you go there, you can download a free giveaway, 15 tools to start your web design business. There was a little bit of overlap between the tools I gave within this video and that PDF that you can download, but I have a few other apps that are more business-oriented on there. And that way, you can get my, uh, my newsletter. You know, I, I usually send out two to three emails a week. Whenever I put out new content or sometimes I'll talk about situations I'm in with clients. I also have um, a monthly web design bulletin that I send out which people have given me a lot of great feedback on. Like I said, that's WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And of course, if you found any of these 12 resources helpful, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I left out a bunch of ones that I still love. There's a lot of other tools and blogs that I read and that I use. So if you have one that you like specifically, leave a comment below because I love checking out new tools. And most of all, I hope you're pushing your own website forward, whether it's a freelancing website, whether it's a resume website, a, a blog, whatever you're doing, you're going to learn a lot about business and about yourself when you're going through the process of building websites. You know, I think they're the new medium for business. And I think that's becoming more apparent as you see all these businesses moving online. So thanks a lot for taking the time to watch today. And I hope you join me on the next video. Have a great day, everyone.